Welcome to those near and far. Welcome to Mage the Ascension as luck would have it. Oh. Our game is set in 2019 in Montreal, Canada. Let's meet our mages this evening. Bloop. I'm Christine Napoleon, and I'll be playing Raina Tremblay. I'm Jason Maxwell, and I'll be playing Max Toulon. I'm Katarina Abrecht, and I'll be playing Portia Lavoie. I'm Alan Lodden, and I'll be playing John Staunton. Thank you, guys. Now, recap. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. One more. <laughs> uh, I'm Lloyd Cohen. Otherwise, I was at Geek 5150, and I'm Orrin Pritchard. We just went a different direction than I'm used to. Um, recap. The gang spent two weeks catching up on miscellaneous studying. Then came Oren's memory appointment. And Akashic Mindmaster helped him figure out that most of his childhood memories were fabricated. Da da da. All right. It is currently November 29th, 2019, in the morning. No. I'll get a cup of coffee. Cup of coffee down in the lobby. Doing the usual uh, routine. Doing the usual routine. Out of character, is everybody back or am I still with the bunnies or the puka? You can go back whenever you want. Well, I'm not leaving them alone. Oh, that's true. So, Reina, do you ever go back and, uh, I can't remember why Sarah was there, because Sarah was watching them before. So, Sarah comes back and, okay. I thought and relieves you of duty, and oh, relieves she? you of duty, yeah. I stumble back through the portal and collapse in Raina's room sure yeah I just collapse onto Raina's bed because at this point I can't like move very far I'm exhausted okay. you are exhausted so um, you catch I, don't, I nap or something you nap okay how about Raina I know she might be busy where she is Raina is still in her room, and so she kind of looks over at Portia like, rough day, huh? Uh, yeah, I don't have any more bones or limbs or brain cells. Bones or limbs or brain cells, they fell away from me. I also slid to the floor. It was a long day. No, I'm fine, though. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I won't lay here. I'll go to my room. I'll go to my room. I'll get a coffee. I will You're get... welcome to nap on my bed if you need to. Okay. And I go down to the lobby to get some breakfast. Save me a pancake. I will not. <laughs> <laughs> Poor shit, I'd fallen asleep. What date did you say it was? The 29th. 29th. Okay. So it is a weekday. So. Okay, sorry about that. I'm here. <laughs> Weekday, so morning classes. Morning classes. 
Okay, then I will fast forward into the afternoon. Everybody is coffeeed and everybody has woken from their naps and everybody is uh, sitting. I'm not even the... fully enthusiastic. Yeah, you are wide awake and fully enthusiastic. Um, in the in the lobby, Professor Edge is kind of like draped over one of the overstuffed couches. I guess she got into my wink winky cookies. And um, she is actually outside of her office for once. She said, God damn it, I am taking a break. I'll hand her a cup of coffee. She gladly takes it and takes a sip. What you can do on your break? Rest, relax, read a book, go on an adventure, visit the planet. I don't know why I'm babbling. I must need more caffeine. You say that like you haven't had enough. How much is enough? That's <laughs> like, is that the true question? That is the, there is no limit to my caffeine consumption. <clears throat> or, or would look over at uh, Max. Can I eat horse tranquilizers? <laughs> I don't hey, keep do those on to... hand. Do Especially a since... for, ca I, for caffeine IV. Especially since horse tranquilizers are veterinary work and I'm in human med school. <laughs> yeah, but we gotta have our equivalent. I think it's called an espresso. That is not the equivalent of a tranquilizer. <laughs> it's a, that's, a, that's quite the opposite there, uh, Portia. Yeah, it's the oh, other well, other direction. Tranquilizer is another man's. If you want to be tranquilized, else. we can hook you up with two milligrams of Ativan and ten milligrams of Xanax at the same time. Jesus Christ, or dude. I can adjust the bacteria in your mouth to produce uh, antidepressants and uh, muscle relaxants. Or just looks at John and points at Portia. Get her. Ah! <laughs> and who, why? I hide under a table. There is a coffee table. In, yep, there is a coffee table in the center of the common area. <clears throat> While you're under down there. Oh, hey! Please. Gross, dude. Get a kick at him. <laughs> I was just going to ask you to see if you can find that quarter I dropped. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Sorry, I should get closer to the microphone. Wait, when did we get another cat? Nobody got a cat. Especially not me. I said wah, 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 but it would have sounded probably more like bam. This is this is going off the rails quickly. Okay, focus. I sit back up in my proper chair. Yeah. Going off the rails. <laughs> We're trying. We've been trying to get back on the rails since season two. <laughs> 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 but uh, or will or will sit back and start and start drinking uh, peppermint tea. <laughs> So, uh, is <laughs> there was rails? Yeah. Um, Professor Edge sips daintily from her coffee cup and asks if there is anything that the group wants to accomplish or do. Yeah. <sighs> Not babysit. <laughs> I 
you know, I wouldn't yep. mind just going out and finding something new. Just going out? And yeah, just find something we haven't seen before. <laughs> Thanks. And that's been a lot of this whole adventure, Bubby. <laughs> just like flap that right in front of me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the real question is, what haven't we seen already? <laughs> exactly. I came back in the very middle of that, and I'm. The context sounds like we're helicoptering our penises. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm guessing that's not really what it's about. <laughs> oh, God. What? <laughs> Sorry, as, as I say, Honey Badger don't care. Oh my god. <laughs> what? Okay. Uh, my shroom, my Professor, <laughs> Professor Edge uh, stands up and, and says, I am totally up for a walk. You know, with White Tally Magic Ho. 4, I could do transformation magic, so the helicopter penises. <laughs> oh god <laughs> life mage not smeesy <laughs> unfortunately being Irish and Native American I can't do that <laughs> anywho we she basically snatches up her purse from the table and uh Pulls out a cigarette of all things and steps out onto the front porch of the hotel. Right, Orn would uh, still follow. Let's go, y'all. I guess. Orn will run up to go grab a jacket, pet his cats, and tell him that they, uh, he'll be back later. I'll stay out of the way of the smoke. <clears throat> Seeing that everyone is coming onto the stoop, she uh, kind of takes the lead and begins walking down the street. I'll follow. I will too. Orn will put his headphones in and... Uh... Start walking behind them. So, this would be an opportunity for Sako to go on a tirade about chaos magic, but I won't repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> so, she will basically go on and on about how. Uh, Real there are multiple realities and multiple dimensions and sometimes they overlap. Ooh. Thank you. I got food. Yay. Yay. And I got that on camera. That's excellent. Um so Let's see, we did the carnival. We could go to the zoo. Do you want to go I, to the zoo? I can dig going to the zoo. Sweet. Let's I go to the zoo. zoo. Ooh, an alternate reality zoo. Let's do it. <laughs> Unfortunately, okay. it's it's uh, just barely alternate. Like it's a it's a change that just happened recently, so all the animals are still the same. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Well, it's still worth going. Shall we follow anybody? Yes, no, I have snacks. 
Yay, snacks. <laughs> I hope they're winky. Oh, half of them are definitely. Mm hmm. Brownies, anybody? And they pass them out. Oh, my God. It's everywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> what if it delivered? Never mind. Maybe we could swing by the Tollies and get some uh, uh, takeout before we get to the zoo. God, I want some tacos. I'm sorry, I got a quesadilla. That sounds amazing. Ooh, I have to go make some quesadillas after this. Okay. So she hails a Uber and uh. She makes sure that it is a van and not a normal car. And everyone piles in, I assume. Yep. 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 Let's go. Yeah, pretty much. It is a mere 10 minute ride until you get to the Montreal Zoo. And it is, there are this, like, over awning uh, signage, basically, saying Montreal Zoo. And when you just come in, there is a bat room to your left and a ape room to your right, and then uh, the aquarium seems to be right in front of you. So kids, before we go in, does anyone need to use the bat room? <laughs> ah, good call, though. Yes. Hello. Back. Does there seem to be a bunch of people going in? Are, are, are there a bunch of uh, people going into the bat room? There's lots of people. Uh, um, there, there are lots of people. Okay. I'm going to go in the bat room real quick. I'm amongst okay. the other people. And I'm just going to pick one of the bats at random, maybe a larger one. Okay. And lean up against the glass by him and say, I know your secret, and you need, need to stay away from my sister. And as I walk away from him, just under my breath, fucking vampire. <laughs> I'll just leave. The the ba vampire bat does not bat an eye. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet some of the uh, other guests do though. <laughs> <laughs> A kid is now enamored with the bat. <laughs> I like food. I'm sorry. You're fine. I hope you don't think less of me for eating on stream. Um, How dare you be a human and consume things? Let's go for it. Goodness. <laughs> Sorry. So we're arriving in the zoo and people there and this kid's enamored at the bat. Then what happens? What do we see? What do we see? Is escape rhinos happening today? I hope we don't have escape rhinos. That would be unfortunate. I hear it was not good for a person named James. It's not a good time. Well, let's see. Is there anything cool at the Montreal Zoo? Halloween at the zoo. Oh my gosh. Oh, I bet that would be fun. I bet you that would be so fun. What See if they the have animal. good snacks? Because I think like some zoos have stepped up their snack game. 
I bet Halloween at the zoo doesn't happen at in November 29th. Is that where we are? Yeah. <laughs> They'd have Christmas lights up, though. Oh, yeah, they would, wouldn't they? Yeah, and you'd get the popcorn because they do that. They bring out the popcorn cookers sometimes. So those are kind of always there. But like, you could get like the nuts or something. I don't know. They bring out some special snacks for the Columbus Zoo anyway, or they used to. I don't, I don't know about this here. Montreal Zoo, I'm sure it's more fancy schmancies. There is a fox exhibit, a gray wolf exhibit, a raccoon exhibit, white tailed deer, an arctic fox, and they're all out to play today. It is a very nice day. Fantastic. Does anybody look at the animals any closer than face value? Well, if it's an alternate reality zoo, I'm like, I don't know. It's not an alternate oh. reality. It is, oh, it's just it is the reality just zoo? Just the Montreal, the uh. Montreal Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with it today. <laughs> oh, oh, I will too. I will do a little uh, time search of the patterns of each of the predators. Okay. Um, there is a different makeup of the, the red fox. Yeah. So when the fox is looking in my direction, I want to flash a little prime energy down my hands. You know, not a threat or anything, just enough to show that I'm awakened. Let's see if there's a response. The fox laughs. <laughs> oh, that tells me it was seen. Now that is a super telling of the breed. Is that this fox is capable of laughing. Is its name Giggles? No. But it's a... Anyway. Does anybody look at the fox with Prime Sight? Oh, shoot. I need to pull up. I think John out. was already doing that. Yeah, I'm just being that with Prime. He flashed oh, no. Prime. But he no. Didn't. I've. I've been looking at all of the predators with the patterns with Prime. When this one looked different is when I uh, flashed to show that um, I was awakened in the see the response. Uh, when you look at the fox, it has eight more tails. Okay, when there's a few fewer people around me, lean as close as I can get to the fox. I know there's probably glass in the way, but I don't know who you are, but I sure hope we can be friends. Oh, we'll be friends if we can get, if you can get me out of here. I'll try to be back tonight. I was kidnapped. Oh, I understand. I suspect I'll know by who. But, yeah, I'll do my best to have, to have you out of here by tonight. Park closes at six. And it's like 11 in the morning. Do you tell any of us about it? Not yet. But I will. So I will continue uh, checking out the predators. Mm -hmm. To see if anybody else uh, shows up. The eagle is just an eagle. The porcupine is just a porcupine. 
you know, being an American, I'm half tempted to free the eagle too. <laughs> <laughs> So with the way Max is wired, he would be using life sight, not prime sight, and was... not um, not looking for anything magical. Just studying, studying anatomy. <laughs> you see the nine tails because you're looking at its skeleton. Did I hear John talking to the fox? No, you did not. <clears throat> Are there any people around? A handful of people. Mm. Goers to the zoo. Fanny packs and, you know, uh, ball caps adorned. Then I am not going to tip my hand or anything, but I will go t take it aside with the others and be like, um, so that fox got nine tails, not just one. <clears throat> and eight of them are invisible. Okay, am right. I here for this one? You can be. Okay. Yeah, um, I had a little chat with that fox and look around, make sure there's no witnesses to this. I am planning to come back tonight and get he or her or whatever out of here. I'd appreciate any help. Um, I'll help if I can. I've got two life, one matter, two mind. One time. Sounds like you'd be a big help. I can wait in the bathrooms under till after closing. I don't know if that still works, but if it does, that'd be my thought. Hide somewhere. You have what? Hide in the zoo till after it closes, but like a little before it closes. <clears throat> that would be my thought. Professor Edge kind of drops back a minute. What are you planning? There's an awakened fox trapped here, and I'm planning an escape. Ah. Well, I'm not going to hang around all day, but we can probably come back when they close. I told it to expect me after dark. So be it. John Staunton, After Dark. After Dark. <laughs> <laughs> Orin would uh, look up like, I probably wouldn't be much help. I mean, anytime I try to help, we've all seen what happens. Just remember that this kind of bad luck goes away. And then you really blossom, and you're going to do great someday, hopefully tonight. Well, I'm not looking at bad luck. I'm looking at the fact that, well, one of the instances you wouldn't know about because you weren't there here for it. But, yeah, the other thing you were there for, I don't want to cause any destruction. <laughs> I am not worried. There will come the moment when you realize who and what you are, and you won't have a problem after that. Irk. <laughs> okay. I'm going to call Jody and ask okay. her to look, look, to look for a, uh overnight parking lot as close to the zoo as possible and to park there. Okay, the uh, da, 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 da. hold on. 
the there's on-site parking and there are various um, eateries and shops and the like scattered within the zoo. Okay, what I'm looking for is a place to park a 40 foot RV and a 40 foot trailer where people won't be looking at it and saying, why is that still here after dark? Um, there are people who park overnight at the zoo. Okay. And that's what I'll ask her to do. Okay. And it's free parking. Okay. And I'll specify that I want the um, a swing on that's under the uh, uh, RV, the one where I can put the car in. I mm -hmm. want that away from the street, away from crying eyes. Okay. Crying eyes. <laughs> watching you. <laughs> I thought oh, you were going to go it. into the sort of my, pretty dancing version. <laughs> my RV has a rack that I can drive the car onto, and then the rack goes under the RV and is out of sight. Does it jiggle, jiggle, or does it fold? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Well, it kind of sings the uh, opera of its people while it's moving. <laughs> rack, rack city, bitch. <laughs> Excellent. We're definitely in the grass at this point. So, the day goes by pretty well. You know, there's always somebody with an eye shot. And the, uh, the eatery is quite good. <clears throat> the zoo itself is about 30 minutes outside of Montreal, outside of downtown Montreal. So um, there are uh, like fast food area and like a Starbucks and uh, McDonald's and stuff like that um, just outside of the zoo and also inside the zoo. Oh, good, Do they have a donation box for the upkeep of the bears? Why would they have that? Well, I don't know. I, I've only... In the zoo in here where I live, they have a couple of bears. They have this box because it costs $125 a day for each bear. Mm -hmm. So they ask for donations to, to help pay for that. Okay, so not like a big box to donate like bear toys or anything. No, money. You drop oh, okay. money in it. Because the bears get uh, steel kegs. They don't need any toys. I'm sure there's a donation box for the bears. Why? Do you want to put a like, device in it or what? No, I'm going to put a couple hundred dollars in it. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah, definitely for sure, dude. It's like, I think I saw it over there in that little like thing talking about the differences between black bears and brown bears and polar bears. See, it's got the little chart. It's the colorful thing over there at the beginning. Yeah, the, like I said, I'm just gonna, underneath it, it's there. Yes, I'm just going to drop a couple hundred bucks in for the brown bears, or no, for the black bears. My bad. Black bears. Gotcha. That away. I point in a direction that I did see the bear donation box, which is in the poster thingy. I don't know. We're just going to assume that's what it looks like. I could look up the layout, but I didn't. I thought you were, it was a box to donate bears. I thought it was for bear toys. <laughs> and I mean, I know a few. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, that took a that took a turn or a tumble. But it, 
But um, all right. The park uh, staff begin to approach each of the uh, each of the exhibits, and uh, it is feeding time. And for twenty bucks, you can feed one of the animals. Sure, I'll feed the brown bear. Why do I keep doing that? I will feed the black bear. You will I'm feed sure the back the black bear. Yep. Actually, I don't know if there's a bear at this zoo. <laughs> World of Darkness. It is World it's of Darkness. Darkness. It'll be any zoo. It'll be like any zoo. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to feed the red pandas. We have bears with tumors and bears with leaks. I want to feed the koala bears. bears. That's what I want to do. Oh, feeding the red foxes is prohibited. Of course, of course it is. It's World of Darkness. Screw it. It's World of Darkness. <laughs> Screw it. Okay. <laughs> Every exhibit has an animal page. with cancer. I'm just going to close the zoo as a reference point and just, ah. just wing it. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Uh, as as Portia goes to walk away towards the koalas, he, he'll he'll uh, wave and get her attention. Watch out for the drop bears, and then turn away. Step back and look up. <laughs> <laughs> the sky is nice and blue. And the little specks that indicate the falling drop bears. There are no drop bears. He's just fucking with you. Orin, Orin would probably walk over to the wolf exhibit to do to do the feeding. Okay. This is a gray wolf. There's three of them. And they He'll, and, and you said it was twenty you said it was twenty dollars per $20. feeding. He'll he'll hand the uh, the person sixty to for one for each wolf. Okay. Go ahead and roll animal ken and intelligence or manipulation, depending on how you're coming at this. Uh, what's the uh, equivalent of animal ken and mage? Oh, is there an no animal ken? Mm -mm. Would it fall uh, under science? It would fall under... Their survival. Science, science, yeah. Okay, you said, oh, so it's science intelligence? Mm-hmm. Difficulty? Uh, difficulty six, because you have the proximity, you're giving them food. Okay. Four, four successes. successes. So the yeah the uh, the wolves are taking to uh, Orin like wagging their tails and kind of leaning their body against his and hoping for more food. Oh, well, he's standing right there if they need him. Uh, is it is this like uh, like glass with holes in it, or for the exhibit, or is it just open air? It's open air. There is a moat around each exhibit, and then there's a wall with a guardrail. Okay. So you can't get too close. Um, he'll, he'll pull out. 60 more and hand it to the person. They basically put you inside the enclosure. All right. He will you get 10 minutes. He'll uh, walk slowly towards the wolves. 
It's a sound <laughs> like a conjugal visit. <laughs> <laughs> Max, this isn't you going to your D&D game. <laughs> The wolves are domesticated. Where you can <laughs> zoo after dark, where you can risk your whole ass <laughs> for life for 120 bucks. Oh my goodness. Worth it. <laughs> um, but when he gets uh, within probably about 10 feet, he'll uh, go down to his knees, kind of like sitting on the back of his feet. And One of the females comes up to you. He'll reach around behind him and get one of the pieces of food and bring it up in front of her. She kind of like paces back and forth. Like she's within five feet, but she's kind of like. Like there's a force field between you and the food. He'll uh, he'll lower his body a little bit lower, not laying down or anything, and then lower his head and then reach it out further. It takes eight minutes for her to inch close enough to snatch the food from you. And then she bolts. All right, he'll he'll look around for the other two. They're on either side of you. Okay, he'll. This could be a weird way to put it, but walk slowly but fast enough to where he can reach both mm -hmm. in enough time, and he'll find like a rock or something that he can lay the food on, and then go to the other one. Okay. And then after he does that, he'll walk back out of the enclosure. Okay. Oh, you had one minute left. Yeah, don't don't want to risk running out of time and getting in trouble. Uh, you look like the kind of sort who welcomes trouble. You can say dun, that again. <laughs> and the sun is starting to go down. The staff are basically like with megaphones basically saying the, the place is closing down in five minutes. You have just enough time to GTFO. Or no head for the exit. As will yep. Professor Edge and <clears throat> and John. Um, and Max has been he's been kind of near the exit waiting because he was not interested in eating animals, but uh, he was listening to podcasts while he was waiting. Ha. Huh. All right. I've gotta go feed the koala bears because they're goodly if that's allowed, if they're koalas. There are koalas and you Hooray. can feed the koalas. Um do I I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to yawn. Science and I'm gonna say manipulation because your probably your manipulation is probably better. Mm. I got three in science, dude. Science. Science rules. No, I'm manipulation. Okay, two and okay. Thanks for your patience. Two, two, two. What's difficulty? Difficulty six, because they're they're within reaching for success. Okay, <laughs> they let you hold the koala. Mm -hmm. 
while you feed them. The oh my gosh, I'm melting. I'm truly melting. My my hard little heart just feels so full of joy. It is. The <laughs> koala is hugging you. Oh, it's so floofy. It is so floofy. Yay. Um, do I check it to be weird? Okay, I, I do want to like try to check it to make sure it's like of this planet since this zoo already has one weird animal. Um, as you look, uh, it seems you with your time sight, it shows that the koala is in its later years. Mm. And um, it is very fond of you. Is it like of this like, it, like it dimension? It seems though? to be of this dimension. Okay, cool. Well, I give it a hug and a pat. Loud. I get back to the thing when the thing is over. Zookeeper. Zookeeper is what they're called. Yes. Yes. This has been delightful. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. My of little course. queer heart. So full. Big queer heart. Whatever. And I walk towards wherever Chase is or Max is hanging out. Surprise drop bear. Oh god. <laughs> surprise, surprise drop bear. The park closes. Everyone is removed from the park, whether they like it or not. And uh, Professor Edge looks for a new um, a new Uber van. A new Uber van comes and drops them off. Like, t you drive off in the Uber van and Eventually, you are dropped off two blocks from the uh, shantry. And <clears throat> and there is, a, once you are dropped off, there is a ridiculous amount of traffic. Like, Truly ridiculous. It is a parking lot. Ridiculous amount of traffic. Lots of honking horns. Everyone in park. On somebody's window. What's going on here? I don't know, man. I think someone's having like a medical emergency or maybe there was an accident. I don't know. I'm way back here. I will head toward the front at a good clip. It's a little bit of a hike, but um, you do manage to find uh, a man in a black Audi at the front of the line um, who is clutching his chest and looking at his ceiling with his mouth open. Use Prime to check him for what's going on. Uh, you check him out. So that would be medicine, intelligence, difficulties. I don't know. Are you opening the car? Yeah, I'll open the car and um, I'll have my bag with me. Okay. Um Go ahead and roll medicine and intelligence difficulty seven. Okay. Seven by seven. <laughs> Boop. Oh, mm -hmm. I did that wrong. Yes, you did. Is it slash MM? Slash MM. Space seven, space seven. Two successes and one is a 10. So, <clears throat> um, you were rolling for 
that that's for the focus. That's for um, the focus. Oh, you're going to no, use magic to help this guy. <clears throat> okay, so that's a difficulty four. You may spend a quintessence in order to drop it further. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Um, how far do you want to drop it? I think it. I think three is as far as it'll go anyway. Yep. Okay. So, a rete roll difficulty three. Three successes. Excellent. And the uh, you actually walk me through how you snap this guy out of his heart attack. Oh, um, well, once I've died, well, okay, what kind of heart attack is it? Um, is it, is it a clot on the vessels that supply the heart? Is it an interruption in the rhythm for electrical reasons? Is it something stuck inside the, uh, the ventricles or the atria? Uh, it is mostly that it is a, um, It is a electrical issue. Okay, then I'll just use Prime to um, uh, clear the issue and uh, trigger the heart. Get it back into okay. rhythm. I will hide and that. I, I will okay. hide that by first pressing in on his jugular and then uh, pressing in on his sternum. Okay. Doing the jugular will bring his blood pressure down. Doing the sternum will just make the uh, onlookers think I did something. Yeah. And he snaps out of it. He looks very tired, but he seems to be of sound mind. Can you pull over there? Are, are you able to? Yeah. 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 He kind of leans forward and puts his hands on the steering wheel. And pulls the car over. So traffic can go again. Have him lean back in his seat. Mm -hmm. Sure, you were just having a heart attack. It would have been fatal. And you would have been blocking traffic for a while if you died. Which is the worst part. I've been told I shouldn't drive. And can you tell me what you were doing at the time of the heart attack? Driving. Do you see the problem? I do see the problem. Are you going to do it again? It could happen at any time. What could happen at any time? This is my third heart attack. Holy shit. Sorry, did we did, all hear that? At this point, I am issuing a medical diagnosis of you're an idiot. And I will be notifying the police. Don't try to drive because you will kill yourself. And I'll call the cops. The cops are trying to get through the traffic. Oh, I'll wait here. I know he's not going anywhere because I've got a loaded crime sphere. <laughs> At some juncture, the man wants to get in the car and drive away. Yeah, well, that's not happening. I've got Prime, I've got martial arts, I've got a gun. He's not getting in the car and driving away. Can I call for a ride? After the police talk to you. Well, no, go ahead and call. Go ahead and call. He calls his friend who he is trying to get a ride from, and the friend agrees. 
<clears throat> it might take a while to get there, but he will get there. Oh, and the police finally make it a good four hours later. The moon is rising. Okay, in that time, I have texted the others to come join me. The ones that want to, anyway. I show up, but I'm slightly confused as to what is going on. Professor Edge, like, dying, or is that no, that was something else? Everything somebody okay? Else. What's going on? Oh, goodness. That was oh, a random. This gentleman. This gentleman has been, had three heart attacks, including the one I just saved him from. Oh, goodness. He, he's been told not to drive and had a heart attack while driving. So we're waiting on the police, and I'd rather have someone smarter than him to talk to during the wait. Also, if we can find somebody who can clear the traffic a little faster so the cops can get here, you know, that would help. I mean, doesn't he kind of, so he's okay, though? He doesn't need to go to a hospital or anything? No, he needs to be handed over to the police because he's driving when he's not safe to drive. I mean, that seems more like a medical issue and that he doesn't have rides or anything than it does that he needs the police. Like, that's, that's not the generally medical, like... The medical issue is handled for now. The moron oh, good. issue has not been. Okay. Well... Not too comfortable with calling the police, but if that's what you think needs to be done, then I guess that's what we're doing. I just want someone to hang out. I've already made the call. Fair. So, yes. Cookies? I have snacks. And well, Portia, like, holds her purse up, and you can pick from my snacks in my purse. I have lots of purse snacks. If the Person. police are coming, you might want to put the winky ones away. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, it's legal in Canada, so we're okay. But yeah, they're in the bottom of my purse. Don't eat them. How, how far is this uh, where he's parked to the Chantry? About a block. <laughs> uh, or we'll uh, look, everybody. I'm going to head home and figure some stuff out. I'll see you guys when you get back there. And he will walk through flowing traffic. It's, he'll get up near where the Chantry is, and he'll walk through traffic okay. to get to get back to the Chantry. Okay. Um, let's do dexterity acrobatics. Threshold of two. Uh, would it be anything other than acrobatics? Because there's not acrobatics on the sheet. Athletics, then? Okay, that's going to be fun. What's the difficulty? Difficulty six. But threshold of two. Well, or we'll probably get ready to get hit by a car. <laughs> yep. Yep. You think you make it most of the way, kind of froggering it a little bit, and you don't see the car coming from the opposite direction. And you tumble over the hood and into the windshield and up the top on top of the car. Uh, you are struck by the vehicle. Do I see this? Oh, you sure do. Oh, shit. So I probably also see this. He'll, yes. He'll, he'll, uh, does he end up on his back when he lands? Um, No. Face first into the asphalt. He right. he kind of so, uh, he kind of 
he kind of lifts and lowers his head, kind of tapping his forehead on the ground. Uh, it worked last time. Fuck. Raina yells, oh shit! Yeah, I'm just yeah. mostly stunned. Go. Fuckity fuck, I, fuck, I fuck, and I run over? I don't know. Do, do you know medical stuff? Like, shit, dude, I've got some first aid. What the fuck are you doing, Aaron? Don't run into traffic, I, Portia. Yeah, oh, right. Fiddle thumb. Portia, Portia, hmm. stay here with the moron. I've got him. Okay, and fine. fine. I will run, making sure not to get struck by cars by looking both ways. Okay. Athletic dexterity, difficulty seven. Uh, threshold of two. I think I'm going to dump the willpower into that. Okay. Three. So you can't botch. And that gives you one success. Okay. Good. Why didn't that work? Is there a space afterward? No. Let me try again. I said there's a space after the MM for me. Well, there's supposed to be a space. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So it should have worked. It should have worked. There you go. So three successes plus the willpower point. Well, the willpower point, um, per, it basically prevents you from botching. Okay. So it does not add to your successes. Okay. So... I will get over to him, do the immediate assessment, uh, airway, breathing, circulation, no blood under his body. Is he safe to move? All right. Let's find out. Why is it doing this? Okay, three successes. Um, he is unconscious. His body seems okay. He doesn't seem to have any broken bones. He has some bruising uh, starting to form on his ribs and on his hip. But um, other than that, uh, he seems okay. So my assessment is that he's safe to move. He's yeah. Your assessment is that he is safe to move. Okay. Um, roll him over onto his back, grab him by the uh, armpits, and pull him out of the way of cars. You drag him out of the street. People are staring, but they are not interfering. The police that were called beforehand also noticed that you are dragging someone off of the street. They uh, impound the car of the man who had the heart attack because it was left behind. And they come over to assess the situation and ask you to step away from the victim. I will produce my physician's assistant uh, license from Quebec and show it to them. Okay. They um, still ask that you step aside. Well, I don't really have a choice, so I will step aside. 
the cops basically call in uh, an EMT. The EMT comes from the other direction, the same direction that uh, hit uh, what's his nuts, Oren. And they, EMTs basically pick him up and put him on a gurney and put him in the ambulance and puts on the siren. Does anybody go with the ambulance? I will. Okay. They no, well, pick him up. Sorry, well, while he's what? Before they wake him up, I mean, while, while he's still unconscious, the other guy's doing his assessment or whatever. Now, to get you to safety, I had to put my hands in your armpits. If my fingers fall off, we're going to fight. <laughs> and no, I will just watch the EMT. <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll watch the EMT. If I don't like something that he's doing, he gets to see the license too. He seems to be straight laced, you know, like doing everything he can to, you know, like giving him oxygen and wrapping up his bruises and look, looking for internal bleeding and stuff like that. There doesn't seem to be any sign of such. But he wraps up Orin anyway. Okay. Any open wounds at all? Any cuts or anything? No cuts. No. There's like road rash that he got from slamming into the um, slamming into the asphalt when there might be a cut or two from the glass. Anywhere that looks like the skin's broken, I'll turn half the bacteria into things that will eat the other half. So there won't be infections. Okay. <clears throat> and they make it to the hospital. <laughs> oh, dear. Cars two are in zero. <laughs> bum 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 bum. Bum 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 bum. While uh, Oren is being carted in, and um, John is following the EMTs and the cops as the, like the parade goes down the hallway. Uh, while the cops are informing the EMTs and the EMTs are informing the doctor. All right. I will. I'll be with. <laughs> so, Oren or or is still asleep, but you kind of like look in one of the rooms and you see a skeletal figure in dark robes with giant black wings perched over an old man. Nod to him and go about my business. That is the natural part of life. The the skeletal figure kind of hops down and closes the door. <laughs> and when Oren comes back, he will wake up. He's hooked up to oxygen and he's hooked up to IV and he's hooked up to they're taking his blood to make sure there isn't any underlying issues with him uh, Alcohol, aside from the accident. And the ladies are enamored.
Oren wakes up to uh, like four nurses all kind of like reaching over him like for cords and putting needles into your arm and shoving a tube Fight. down your throat. And Fighting to be the one to put the catheter in. No. <laughs> it, all right, it, and Oren is awake for this? Uh-huh. Oren backhands the catheter out of John's hand. <laughs> Don't you? He, he drops his head back. I didn't say I was the one doing it. That, that's nurse he, work. That's not community work. He... He he drops his head back to the pillow. Don't you fucking dare imply that be used. And the <laughs> nurses urge you to lie back down, and um, you notice there is now bruising where the needles are because you, you know, you used your arms. <laughs> And well, well worth the okay. risk of not getting a catheter. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been a Texas catheter anyway. What the fuck does that okay. mean? A Texas catheter rolls over the penis like a condom. It's glued down with benzoin so it doesn't have to go inside. Oh, um, okay. That's, that's what a guy gets in most circumstances unless he has internal injuries. Mm -hmm. Um, Lauren, are you going to be okay if I if I take off? I've got a date with a fox. Yeah, I'll be fine. Just let let everybody else know because he looks around trying to find his phone. Just let the others know if they want to come while this is going on. They can. Okay. Keep in mind that all decisions here are yours. The doctor can't tell you what to do unless you want to do it. He right? just ca he, he just casually looks down at the catheter. <laughs> yeah. So um Reina is contacted and Portia is contacted and Max is contacted. Uh, All right, where are we meeting at? I text that. The uh, you are given an address for the hospital. Oh, okay. I'll send a group text. Okay. Who is and, who's coming with Lauren? Who's coming with me? I'll go with John. Okay. I'll go where I'm needed. You're needed in both places. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Pick one. All right. I'll stay uh, in the hospital. Okay. All right. Well, I'll go to the Fox. Okay. So, scenes right. part. Okay. So, everyone going with me will meet at my car. Tally ho. I also text back Tally ho. <laughs> <laughs> Tally oh. is not a ho. She is a very nice lady. Uh -huh. I'll call her a hoe if I want to. I don't see the two as being mutually exclusive. <laughs> the group converges on John's RV. Nope, on John's car, which is not in the same place. Ah, I John's see. car is at the Chantry. So we're going to take the car. My, my plan, unless somebody gives me a better one, is take the car to the zoo, enter the zoo with it, get the fox, and then take the car and hide it inside the RV. I don't think that taking a car inside the zoo is really going to be our best, stealthiest plan. But taking it near the zoo and then maybe having a cat carrying case might be a good idea. I feel like a cat carrying thing would also be kind of suspicious. You know, I'm not sure that a nine-tailed fox would be overly impressed with the idea of going in a carrying case. And also, if we take this it... This is an escape busted, mission. It's not about, like, fanciness right now. 
We'll give it a gold bull when we get back. Like, I don't know. I'm up to open to suggestions. Oh, I'm also thinking that if if the constabulary shows up when we have the cat carrier, it looks premeditated. I mean, planning is better than not for success. I don't know. Let's take it. It's better to have it and not need it. To need it, not have it. Do you hear me? We're going to take the cat carrier because it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Ah, sorry. No, I couldn't hear you. I don't know what was wrong, but I turned up my volume. So I have a lot of problems with my audio. So throw that in the cat carrier, throw, throw the cat carrier in the car, uh, throw my teammates in the car, head to the zoo. I assume there's a service entrance or something where they bring in the big chunks of meat in a truck. Something like that, probably around back. Yeah. Do we want to look up a floor plan online before we get back to there? Sounds great. Okay. Investigation intelligence difficulty seven. You find the map. What was the difficulty? Seven or seven. Two success. Two successes. You find a map where there is indeed a so Porsche finds a map of the zoo that includes the loading areas. Hey guys, I found where the loading areas are and I think we can get to them using this path and I point to the path on my iPhone screen or phone screen. No product placement ads here. Um, now was the fox behind glass Yes. Did the glass have like holes in it for air and food and stuff? No. It's open air, but there's a glass wall or a plastic plastic wall. Oh, okay, that'll be easy. Yeah. That'll be easy. All right. Um the fox does not seem to be outside. Knock on the it's glass. Probably back in the rest area, wouldn't it be? Yeah. Although All right. Well, the, most the staff entrance around for the fox enclosure blah, 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 seems to be around here, and I point to the map I have found. Do I know where that is on there? Do I need to You sure it? do. That map tells you everything. Fantastic. So, so the, um, it's designed for the people who work there. So the um, closure has like a back room where like in the winter, the animals will go inside and sleep there. Mm -hmm. You come from the loading bay into the back area of the, of the animals. You kind of go around the zoo down this hallway. Mm -hmm. And you eventually find the fox enclosure where there is a six by eight cage filled with grass and and hay and the the fox is sleeping on top of the hay knock on the glass hey you ready to go it springs to its feet 
and kind of like pause up. Okay. Um, put my hand on the glass. And I'm just going to use a vulgar effect to stop the flow of quintessence through the glass long enough for the fox to get out. Do you have matter? I have prime. You have prime. What level yes. of prime do you have? Three. Oh. You break down the molecules that actually make up the the plastic between you and the fox, and the fox walks through it. And then once the fox is clear, hey, is there anybody else in there we're, we're looking for? Nope. Let's get out of here. Okay. Stop what I'm doing and lead the fox. Uh, and my friends back to my car. Portia and Reina both hear the fox. Good. He didn't mention he could talk. I yeah. said he was awakened. Fair enough. Hi. Hi. Uh, I would guess we're getting into a car. I guess you know what that is. Never mind. Oy vey. <laughs> All right. They so, have been a bane to my existence. I can only I'm imagine. Going, I'm going to drive up and down some streets, park in a driveway for a minute, make sure we're not being followed this way, and then head to my RV. I'll, ask, I'll call Jody up and ask her to have the uh, platform for the car out and waiting. The trip is uneventful. Nobody seems to be following you. And nobody um, nobody gives you any guff. Okay. So get everybody out of the A car. A security light turned on in the driveway that you have pulled up. A security light, like um, an overhead light that lights the area? Yep. Okay. So, yeah, just pull up next to the RV, have um, everyone else get out of the car and go inside. I will park the car on top of the platform and trigger the pet platform to close underneath. And then I will go into the RV. Okay. Uh, and Portia both get into the car or not the car but into the rv uh i'm gonna cut over to orin and max <clears throat> orin is awake Mac when max shows up so orin um that was pretty risky Well, it worked last time when I was walking with Professor Edge. He kind of cringes a little bit. Are there any um, medical staff inside? Or anyone within view? Uh, there are def the nurse's counter is viewable from the room if the door is open. So I'll close the door. Okay. Uh, so have the med have the doctors ran run any tests on you or anything? Have they? <laughs> you have you have no idea. Yeah, I, I don't know. I was sleeping. Yeah. There should be a venipuncture wound on his arm. Well, he definitely has a bruise that is now softball sized on the inside of his left arm. Um, actually, I'm going to open the door and look outside. And if no one is looking, I want to grab the uh, 
file. Ooh. Just yoink it and pull it in. Okay. Um, stealth and dexterity. Difficulty eight. It is late enough to where someone has walked away from the... I'm making sure that I'm keeping an eye on, like, the nurse's station and down the halls to, uh... Mm hmm Come on. Why? Come on, bot. Do our bidding. Zimichi's just like, no. One success. That is, it's a success. You managed to grab his record. Yeah, I'm just looking to see um, if they've actually, like, really run tests or... Basically, they are, do, they are doing a blood test. Um, they will eventually do a urine test. And they will do a stool sample. Those, those, there are, they're written down, but they haven't been checked off as far as, like, actually done yet. Okay, so if they don't have information on your internals yet. Um, let's say we fix those. Well, hopefully they don't notice because they know what I came in with. Uh, just, I'm not going to take, I'm not going to change anything externally, but if you're less hurt, than you came in, or if you're less hurt than they expect with the accident you had, then that's not a problem. Yeah, I guess. So I am going to use my glasses of, as a focus and basically full x-ray full x-ray there are no broken bones is there anything that needs to be fixed um, or is he fine? there's if you like magic um there is there's some bruising but i don't want to take care of anything external because they've seen it mm-hmm but considering the accident, it could have been so much worse. Oh, yeah. So uh, you're actually in pretty good shape for being hit by a car. He he, he just looks at Max and smiles like, cars two or in zero. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. That's Al uh, Alan's moving stuff around. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, gotcha. Okay. The RV is uh, currently containing Portia, Reina, Jody, and John. Mm hmm. Are we, do we make it out? Are we driving back towards the hospital or towards the chantry? Yeah, we can go That's back okay. towards the chantry. 
Okay. Um, I'm going to write the words. I'm going to write the word sleeper on a piece of paper and show it to uh, each of the other two mages when Jody's not looking. What does that mean? I look at the paper and kind of cock my head. I raise my eyebrows really high after reading it. And, you know, when you look, I'll cock my thumb at her. <laughs> the fox? No, Jody. Mm-hmm. Professor Edge is with them, right? Oh. No. Oh. So, and they don't know what sleeper means yet. <laughs> they don't know what sleeper means yet. <laughs> Oops. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a failure <laughs> in uh, training. The planning here has been spectacular. <laughs> I know what sleeper is. <laughs> Well, do we send a group text? <clears throat> yeah, we could do that. What do you want? What do you want to send a group text about? What was just gestured to me on the paper? Oh, uh, just the word sleeper. Now, yeah, or what is it? I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna text. What is a sleeper? To the group text. It's a person who is not aware of the supernatural, like true magic. So a person? A person like Jody, who is not aware of what we do and what we are. Like a it has the potential to be if she's a sleeper or like she's just like, is she possibly magic? No, um, I have no oh. reason to believe that she has any potential. Yeah. <laughs> and, this also and means Professor Ed isn't there. <laughs> also means we need to keep her away from the chantry, or there will be paradox. Can we just like? put her to sleep and she doesn't remember anything i mean like the men in black have stuff like we're fucking mages y'all i'm typing you gotta have something can you do it me what oh, i got a mind thing does that what can i do a mind no do i have mind i don't think i mind how many points in mind do you have do oh that's true professor yeah, I, have two. I have two points in mind and i have two points in life Okay, what do you you want to put her to sleep and make her yep. forget? Uh, yeah, I want to like kind of like make her doze off and kind of think this whole thing is a dream if she like sort of half wakes up or whatever till we're okay. like done how putting are, the fox how away. Are, how are you doing that? Uh, the snack magic. Okay, you take one of your winky cookies. Mm hmm. And give it to Jody. Okay. And Do I roll for that? You can. Um, that would be esoterica or craft, whichever is higher. Plus intelligence or maybe medicine, whichever is more. Mm-hmm. You can't add all of them. You've got to pick one. Yeah, no, I'm just looking. I have strength, dexterity, stamina, manipulation, intelligence, perception. Okay. Do, do, do research. Investigation. I could, I got science. I could use science. And I think I have persuasion. You don't have esoterica? I have manipulation. What? Where would esoterica be? It would be in the third panel. Under spheres? No. Mm-hmm. Abilities? It's, above yeah. that. it's a it's an ability. Yeah. I don't on think that's right on. On. Yeah, it would be in the A's, right? E's. Oh. 
It's between enigmas and investigation. Oh, yeah, I don't have anything in Esoterica. I have an investigation, academics, computer, science, survival. What is research. your highest skill? Uh, science. Then go yeah. with science. All right. Woohoo. Sorry. Difficulty six, because she is perfectly willing to consume said cookie. I have failed. It did not work. Boo. It did not. It, she makes a face at the taste of the cookie. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I have something else in here. I have a brownie. Can I try again? You can try again at a higher difficulty. So difficulty okay. seven. Two success. That would be a difficulty four for your arete roll. You can use the quintessence to lower that difficulty. Um, nah. Okay. Good. Go ahead and roll your arete at a difficulty four. Two success. Nice. The she devours the brownie Yay. and says to John, "I like your friends. We like you too. You're awesome. That was a really good brownie. You are so welcome. I I definitely love to bake. I'm glad you like the brownie. I'm sorry about that cookie. I don't know. I must have gotten some fuzz on it in my purse or something. Oh." Yeah, maybe so. It was a texture thing. Mm, yeah, sometimes the oatmeal throws people off. Oh, the gluten-free kind of tasted like gluten-free. Yeah, you know, I'm thinking around with a new recipe. <laughs> Trying to make everything a little more granola, you know. Yeah. Well, it was good, but the brownie was perfect for some reason. Whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Cause Thank it's... you. Wow, I am I am exhausted. I am going to crash out. But yeah, go for it. Here's a I have a blanket in here somewhere. Oh, it's a wrap. No, here I have go. my own blankets. It's fine. All right. <laughs> you guys feel free to stay up drinking or whatever. I'm just gonna. Do you want to use the? Do you want to use the bed in the trailer, or do you want to use uh, one of the ones in here? I think I'm going to use the bed in the trailer. Okay. I'll pull over so she can get back there. Cool. Sounds good. And she closes the window. And the... Fox is sitting on the floor um, in its in its cat carrier. And mm -hmm. um, please let me out. I'll open the thing and let the poor thing out. Can we get you something to eat or drink? Oh my god, food would be amazing. Do you got a rabbit? Okay, that's going to uh, be I've got some jerky, it's but it's a uh... Beef jerky. I hope that'll be good enough. I've never had beef jerky before. We'll try to find you rabbit uh, as soon as possible, but we'll discuss the rabbits. We'll figure bit. some rabbit things out for shizzles. I will go into the fridge and get the leftover chicken and okay. a couple of eggs. Smart. Eggs you, are great. you eat at the table, or how do you want it? Oh, the table is fine. I put that on the table on a plate and the, a big glass of water. The fox gets on uh, on two legs and puts two legs on the table and kind of kind of eats at the chicken and uh, beef jerky and and the eggs. Uh, 
Thank you. And it will provide water. Lots of water. Water. Of water course. is great. Go on, 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 go on. <laughs> and the more you look at the fox, the more he acts like a human. Mm -hmm. Walking on two legs, using his paws to grab stuff. Are you a type of puka? Puka? Oh no. Froze. I don't know what a puka is. Oh well, then never mind. I guess that would be a no. Magical being. Oh, I'm a magical being, all right. What kind of being are you? I was created by a god. Oh, geez. Well, that sounds pretty important. Or not, maybe. I don't know. Is it? I like to think so. Are you trying to get I... back to the your god? Or what, where, what are you doing? Oh, that would be amazing. But I don't know if that's possible. Well, we so do know away. a kind of train station-y type place, possibly. But we'll have to ask our, um, we're sort of like students, so we may need to, oh, never mind. Um, yeah, I'm going to go sit down, but I'm probably saying too much. You sit down. Okay. The fox continues to eat. And the voice is androgynous, but the more you listen to it, the more you're thinking it might be a they or a him. Hmm. It's hard to tell because you're not looking at its, you know, fiddly bits. Yeah. Do you have a name we should call you? Oh, Nicole. Well, nice to meet you. Glad I'm, I'm Portia, by the way, in case that we haven't quite met formally. In Hello, formally. Portia. And it extends a paw, to, a paw towards you. I shake it. And yes, thank you. Kind of, yes. Thank you for rescuing me. Of course. We wouldn't want, well, yes, of course, of course, of course. Why were you kidnapped? I'm John. Oh, yes, Hi, John. John. I'm John, and it was my honor to serve you in this way. Shake paws with him. <laughs> shake, shake. Great. Um, so I was kidnapped from my forest, and um, I started out in Japanese zoos, and then um, they shipped me all over the world for various reasons and I ended up in Montreal. How did they catch you in the first place? Food. Fair enough. That would get me too. I don't think they knew. Most people well, don't. To our planet in the first place, then. It feels like a whole different planet, doesn't it? Man. Well, I, I'm told it is, but like, so you're not from this planet, then? Exactly. Of course not. Of course not. What? What? I'm from. Planet? I'm from Japan. Ah, well, yes. Okay. Fair enough. It's English is very good. So how did you learn English? <laughs> I listened. Well, you're smarter than me. I, I don't think with all my years of watching anime, I've picked up Japanese much yet. Maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> Reina. Oh my God, Portia, you can't just ask someone why they were born on Earth. <laughs> well, you can ask. It doesn't make much sense, but you can ask. <laughs> you can ask. Yeah. 
doesn't make a lot of sense. I think it's funny when you ask, so just continue doing it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just going to eat my my granola bar and sit here. I've definitely put my foot in it. You put your foot in your granola bar? Yes, definitely. (laughs) Eat in granola bars. That's how I eat. Like Mork. <laughs> sure. So the fox finishes the food, kind of curls up on the floor, and says, This like isn't comfortable. Bed. I would like a bed. Like- and and he finds the nearest bed and they hop up and curl up and go to sleep. So he's opening uh, one of the two uh, beds that fold up to the uh, wall. Okay. Right. Because other than that, there's the captain's chair that should be just about right for him. He will find the, the if you are pulling down a bed, then he will... Take advantage I'll pull down of the, bed. the beds. I, I will pull down the bed that doesn't get in the way of the bathroom. Okay. And there is a sleeping fox. I guess we should try to take it to the chantry and then take it to the space so it could go home. Or no, it doesn't go anywhere but Japan. So I guess we need to find it to an airport. I guess we need to find it in an airport or something or take it back to the well, chantry from the chantry to the airport. I don't know. What do you let's, think? Let's discuss with him what's best for him first. He may have reasons well, not to go back to Japan. He may have reasons not to stay here. Well, shouldn't we at least take him to the chantry so he could be hidden? Like we're kind of on the lamb, sort of. Well, let's think about this, all right? We've all seen that he has nine tails. I'm no expert on Japanese mythology, but it seems to me that a fox with nine tails, which would be called a a kitsune or something, would be an extremely powerful and extremely tricky little thing. You know, um, like like a fairy with, with a, like a fairy in a bed. The chantry so, might not be the best place to take him. What are we going to do with him then? I thought, I don't know what I thought. Oh, yeah. all, all, all I knew is that he was in a cage he didn't belong in. Um, I think we should talk to him more before we invite him to the uh, chantry. Maybe let Professor Edge uh, make the final decision. Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure that Professor? the mythology is wrong. Should we text her? Knows with her. Sure, go ahead. Dear Dr. It, I think we've found a magical being. It has nine tails, and we have rescued it from the zoo, and now we are sitting in an RV with it. And two passed out when, uh, yes. Help. She texts back W H U T? <laughs> Question mark. We've got a magical being in our car, and we could use some existence. We're in a RV off the side of the road, and I text the coordinates, I guess. Okay. The Do you have correspondence? Um, hang on. Me... In your spheres? Yeah. Hang on. All you need is a one. What do I need in my spheres? Fudge me. I have... Correspondence. No, I don't have any correspondence. Okay. Then you don't send co- coordinates, and sadly enough. Okay. It looks like I have forces. <laughs> what? Couldn't we get the coordinates? It was forces that got 
it, it's forces that got Orin in trouble in the first place. Oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind then. Can we get the coordinates off Google Maps to send to her? Absolutely. I'll grab them and give them to her. Five minutes Thanks. later, you hear a knock at the door of the RV. And I will open the door of the RV. And there is Professor Edge. The sister in. And she comes in and she sees a fox sleeping on a pullout bed. So this is the magical creature from Japan, I guess. And it, I, oh, it told me his name, third name. I don't really remember. And then with the other lady we got passed out, she had a wink, winky brownie and it definitely knocked her out for, I don't know how long. Anyway, so I think this is her trailer, right? Or is this yours? I don't remember anymore. It's this isn't my trailer. <laughs> oh, sorry, John. The RV and the trailer are mine. Jody is a longtime friend of mine that I'm just kind of keeping an eye on now. Well, that's really sweet of you. I, I can get behind that. Sorry, my bad. Anyway, so yeah, with the fox thing person, yeah, we're not really sure what what we should do next. Oh crap. Um, Sako, has there been any reason for anybody to re recognize the other two facts about the RV? Um, the RV has not shown its awakenedness, if that is what you mean. Okay. Um, yeah. okay. It has not, like, slammed any doors or well, kept you from he, pulling down the bed or anything like that. The fact that it's a rolling node and has arcane. Well, an arcane of... Two? Three? Yes, two. Okay. Two. Um, which is how, you know, um, we have a poltergeist. Um, the, uh, the RV basically, like, kind of purrs. So the engine engages without yeah. being touched. Arcane, and Arcane is all like a somebody else's problem shield. I know. Okay. Sorry. And the then the RV purrs while the fox sleeps. Is that purring? Yep. Just one of the It's the engine, you know. Like, okay, it's not a big cat. Good. It's All not right. a big cat, but it's a... It is currently trilling like a bird. I don't <laughs> usually tell people this on their first visit, but... It's also a node. Ah, this is starting to make more sense. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ouch. The, All fox, right. the fox wakes up, stretches like a human. Stretches like a fox <laughs> and says, Oh, there's more people. This is Professor Edge. She bows. Hmm. Bows back. Professor Edge says, I suspect you're kind of cramped in here. Um, would you like to stay at a premier hotel? 
And so the fox says, oh, yes, absolutely. Stretch, stretch, pop, 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 pop. They hop off the bed. The bed kind of springs back up. So I guess we're all going back to the chantry, or should we just leave you here, John, or what? Um, we've got a place fairly close to the chantry where we can park this, so I can drop you off nearby and then uh, come over after I park. Like a plan for me. So do that. Excellent. Oren gets his blood results back. The people don't, the nurses don't say anything. The, um, they say that you're doing fine. You should be ready to go home this afternoon. Tomorrow. He just nods. So enjoy your sleep here. If you want company, just let us know. <laughs> and she exits. He when he Next sees shutters. The, when, <laughs> when he sees the wig, he just kind of raises an eyebrow. <laughs> Hetero flirting. <laughs> so yeah, Max is playing. Once I leave, he plays the. Um, the podcast he's been listening to. Okay. Uh, just to see if, if Warren likes it. It's called uh, Life on Venus. Life on Venus. It's a... It's a it, romance and relationship podcast hosted by a woman with a very, very sultry radio voice named Venus Dupree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lol. I was going to say Life on Venus, the hottest romance you can find. <laughs> His eyebrow is still raised. Um, the good thing about this podcast is if you do need rest, her voice will really relax you. And with that, I will wrap game. Um, everybody gets an experience point for rescuing a fox. And we will deal with actually entering the hotel and the dis subsequent day next week let's start with Raina uh, this was an incredibly eventful episode um, sorry I'm running away from all of the noise making in the house I'll be uh, right okay. Um, super good. All the good things. Um, I'm not feeling super hot, so <laughs> that's my okay. only bad. Okay. Um, but my experience point goes to John for all the damn hero shit he did this episode, and it was awesome. Thank you. All the damn hero shit. Max. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a kind of a chill one with, uh, with balls f lobbed out for us to hit and some of us hit them and some of us were really preoccupied in our non home spaces Yeah, and just not all here. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's my bad is that I just, I'm not in my 
regular space and I am really distracted. Ah. Um, um, who and thinks I you're will, ugly? I will give John the experience today for <laughs> basically it was the John show today. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sorry. I, I kind of felt like I was dominating it and I really didn't want to. <laughs> Sounds like uh, half a lost season, half of the season for me. <laughs> We've all had those days. Oren. Uh, I I think the good and, and uh, can we can we add um, the uh, car two or zero as a hashtag on the tags? Huh. <laughs> um. No bads, other than Orin getting hit or having a car-related accident for a second time because of my bad, bad rolls. Yeah. Um, and a point will go to John j- just for the fact, and this isn't what he said verbatim, but it's like, "Hey, idiot!" <laughs> 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 I'm calling the cops. All right, uh, John. Um, good was you know it was a fun session. Um, I can never complain. Um, the bad, yeah, nothing really. Okay. Although it'd be cool, cool if you'd uh, slap me around the next time I dominate the game like that. Um, and as for the ugly. I'm going to give that to Oren because it seems like he absorbs all the bad luck that, that all of us should be getting and protects us from having it. Hey, it sounds like real life me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Hey, I will and we do it. So. Oh, um, now I just want to give you another hug. Poor guy. <laughs> the karmic right. sponge. Karmic sponge. All right, Portia. Um, I thought it was a really nice game. I enjoyed, like, it, I, I don't know. I'm, I wasn't as full on my game as I could have been. I, I don't know. I'm just brain fuzzy. Keep trying to wake up. Anyway, um, yeah, it's good. And um, I think uh, John's character gets the the ugly the thing, the, the thing, the point. Yes. Thank you. Good times and, and great oldies. Cool. I don't know. Jeez. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> and if you liked this video at any point, I encourage you to hit the like button. And if you want to see more episodes like this one, then I encourage you to hit subscribe and maybe even ring that bell on the off chance that YouTube actually notifies you when we premiere or go live or whatever. And then we will catch you on the flip side.